Hello, and you are live with us, uh, the MMA India show with your host Praveen Dabas and head coach of Team Relentless, Jitendra Khare. Welcome back. Thank you. अच्छा लग रहा आपको देख के आज और ये सिर्फ आज चैटिंग और एनालिसिस करने नहीं आए ये एक क्या कहते हैं हमने बहुत बड़ी डील की थी और उसको निभाने आए तो सबसे पहले वो डील पूरी कर लेते हैं और डेनिस ब्रमूडेज वर्सेज आंड्रे फिली आई सेड आंड्रे फिली ही सेड डेनिस ब्रमूडेज एंड आंड्रे फिली वन बाय स्प्लिट डिसीजन सो Jitendra is going to cough up 500 bucks. I still think I'm getting robbed. <laughs> But ye kya chillad mein de rahe ho kya sara? So I got to make you work for it, right? Man, ye 5 rupees ke note, 20 ka note, 10 ke note, 20 ke note, 10 10 ke aur 200 ke do note. Ye kya? You have to work for it. <laughs> Coaching mein students aise paise dete hain kya? Hai? Itne bhi milte hain. Itne bhi milte hain. चलो मैं दिखा दूं आपको स्टाइल में पैसे कैसे दिए जाते हैं और जो दूसरा वाला था रोनाल्डो जकारे सूजा वर्सेस डेरेक ब्रमसन ये जीते और ये देखो ये होता है स्टाइल बिकॉज़ इट वाज एज इजी एज दैट फॉर जकारे आल्सो पोस्ट डीमोनेटाइजेशन नोट ये इट वाज एज इजी एज दैट फॉर जकारे आल्सो जकारे आल्सो और ये हम डालते हैं अंदर ये हुआ हमारा एक्सचेंज इसको मैं गिन नहीं रहा हूं आई ट्रस्ट यू फाइट technical performance by gregor gillespie who defeated town boy hometown boy uh, jordan rinaldi uh, via tko in the very first round itself now he showed amazing uh, wrestling skills uh, we won't talk much about it because we know you didn't weren't able to wake up that early to catch the uh, <laughs> the fight <laughs> so uh, but you know he is 11 and 0 now and you know a, a, a really a true prospect in that weight division so we look forward to seeing him fight again now Coming to the two fights which we did speak about that day, which were of course the co-main event, uh, Andre Tachi Fili versus Dennis the Menace Bermudez. You know, a great matchup, a great fight. You know, now there are a couple of specific technical questions which I want to ask you. Of course, what we did see th- uh, throughout the fight mostly was uh, uh, Fili using his uh, his reach advantage and his height advantage. you know especially uh, when he, uh, dennis was trying to take him down he was able to use his height advantage you know as part of the thing of because he had to literally lift him up you know it was much harder for a shorter guy to take him down and uh, dennis of course was always the minute he was going for the jab or a straight uh, dennis was kick, you know kicking him on his calves which was very effective now now tell me this before we get into the uh, uh, fight itself have you ever coached somebody who Had a height disadvantage like that, and what strategy uh, would you go for? So, uh, yeah, being in Linz, we most probably land up with height disadvantage. Advantage. But uh, yeah, I think uh, you know when you're fighting taller guys, it comes down to understanding ranges while you're striking, especially. Yeah. It's about understanding the punching range and the kicking range, hmm. which I think Dennis Bermudez used very effectively. He understood that. Not effectively enough, though, I guess. Uh, are you are you able so yeah i mean in the sense you know he knew that uh, that while he is in his kicking range that's also you know the uh, and and refilee's uh, punching range and i think whenever and refilee went out and you know tried to jab and stuff dennis gomdes used that range very well uh, i guess the second most important thing when you're fighting a taller guy always comes down to you know angles and head movement so that you can get in yeah and uh, you know if you see most of the fight you'll see dennis bermudez uh, moving forward and i think you know fighting a taller guy that's always going to be a risk that you're taking you're always moving forward at the same time you're setting yourself up for counters yeah now before we get into that sorry we'll just take a break taman wants us to talk about something is uh, 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 which we all know we have written about it al- already taman uh, ronald rousey appears at royal rumble 2018 i don't think you saw it and neither uh, 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 <coughs> did i uh, 
so we can't comment much on it except that it is great for both I guess MMA and WWE uh, you, you know the cross promotion of it uh, the fact that an MMA, MMA face is being seen now in uh, WWE leads to more fans crossing over to MMA and uh, vice versa I think that's all what we'll say for now since uh, uh, did you see so no I just uh, read an update and I, I think it's great I think it's great I mean uh, if we uh, we all remember the time when Brock came over to UFC and you know he exactly yeah so many fans over that yeah were not UFC fans but WWE fans to watch and you know? and and in fact if now Ronda decides to make a comeback to MMA she would bring a lot of WWE fans sure. with her which is yeah. great uh, for both sports now Taman I hope that uh, answers your uh, question now getting back to the fight so. That is how you would, of course, uh, deal with it a lot of times. And like you rightly uh, said, a lot of times, uh, though not all the time, there are a lot of situations where our fighters do have a high disadvantage. You know, there are, but there are a couple of very tall fighters yeah. that you have. You know, there's Anil and there's, uh, 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 what are the other names of the fighters who are pretty tall? Rudranj. Rudranj, Rudranj, Rudranj exactly. Is Azad. Tall, Rudranj Rudranj Azad is pretty tall. So these guys don't face that. But other guys do sometimes. Now, coming back to the fight, uh, Dennis, of course, was very effective with his kicks, you know, which he used to keep Andre at uh, distance. But Andre was, was switching directions very effectively, making it hard for Dennis to time those, which is why he, didn't, he, he did get them, but probably not as much as he wanted. And Andre was very effective with his jab, you know, and, and also at stuffing takedowns. You know, so now if you were in the judge's head, of course, I know if you were in the judge's head, you would want your 500 bucks back. <laughs> but since that's not going to happen, in your opinion, you know, but how, how, why do you think they scored the fight the way they did? So, <clears throat> for say, you know, one thing that I believe when, when you're watching a fight, there are only three people in the world whose opinion matters at that point. And, uh, you know, they saw the fight going to Philly. So, you know, you have to give it that way. But again, uh, if you look at how a fight is usually scored in order of preference, it's first thing that you look at is damage or debilitating strikes. The second thing that you would look at is cage control, aggression, and so on and so forth. Hmm. Uh, the way I saw the fight was damage was definitely in the side of Bermuda. So Bermuda, I saw doing more damage. Do you think that's an opinionated opinion and, and that's a little sour grapes? <laughs> since you lost well, your... There are a lot of fights that... Kuch uh, usme, aapki mein se <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I still argue the John Jones Gustafson decision. Same and right. I'm still 100% I still remember for that. That's the GSP right that's, decision. That's your GSP right won that fight for me. No arguments. But the uh, definitely the uh, uh, the John Jones Gustafson decision still rankles. But of course, coming back to this yeah. uh, fight, I, I agree that it was touch and go. But uh, uh, whether, you know, again, damage is subjective. And that's a problem, right? Don't you think that that's a problem in the way that judges see uh, 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 damage is subjective because each judge might be seeing it differently? So, I mean, that's always going to be a challenge. I mean, uh, you know, so I think of a couple of years back, I don't know how long back, uh, you know, they went on to define damage as debilitating strikes more than damage because, again, you have individuals that might cut easily, that bleed easily and that doesn't necessarily mean there's more damage you know i could land 10 effective strikes on you and not or, or like get the nate and uh, the diaz brothers are both known to bleed very easily Easy. from their yeah. eyebrows yeah. and which they actually had shaved yeah. you know to uh, 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 so that there's less meat over there yeah. you know so uh, uh, like you rightly said you know the way somebody bleeds is, is different but then how do you assess so, damage uh, if you look at the definition now of debilitating strikes hmm. is uh, whether my strikes are effective enough to stop you from doing what you were doing. And that's the key or like when you're judging, that should be the first criteria. Now, again, you know, like we say, there's always a human factor. So there's going to be difference of opinions. There's always going to be a point of view and there's always going to be debates. And I think that's what makes it interesting. Yeah. You know, it's very difficult to say that all judges or we as individuals should be calibrated in the same manner. I think the only way we can do that is if you have a machine judging it. But yeah. Otherwise, now, now Taman Preet has come up with another uh, interesting uh, uh, question. He usually is a, a smart guy with MMA. Uh, 
Do you agree with Joe Rogan's comment that you need more than three judges in MMA? I personally, my 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 opinion would be three is enough, and the more you put, it's going to be it's going to average out to the same. But what's your opinion on that? So I think to me it really doesn't matter. I mean, three, five, it's going to be the same thing, right? You'll have where you have two given, you know, two going one way. There might be three going one way. I mean, that's the only difference. I really don't see the difference there. Uh, you know, what's interesting also is that we need to understand that most UFC fights are scored in a different manner. Like, Pride used to be a fight on the whole. Mm. It wasn't round per round. Mm. Whereas UFC, most UFC fights are scored round per round. Yeah. I mean, it again depends on commission and stuff, but when it's happening in the US, it's scored round per round. So, my the damage done in the last round or what I've scored in the last round shouldn't have a bearing on this round. So, which was very evident in the GSP Hendricks fight. So, if you look at the GSP Hendricks fight, on the whole, if it was scored as Pride Rules, maybe it could have been Hendricks easily. But when it was scored round for round, it was GSP. So, again, the question that arises is, is putting more number of judges going to sort that? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Okay. So, basically, like they say, don't leave it to the judges. Yeah, I wish I could do that. Why do you have to call me? I wish I could do that. Please don't leave it to the judges. It was a great fight. It was a great fight. You know, and full respect to both fighters. You know, they gave it their all. And it was like a whole, the whole fight was a chess match. You know, because they came in with their strategies. And both of them, you know, fought fully to that strategy. And, uh, you know, on that day, uh, Andre yeah. just uh, won. Yeah, and again, what we need to keep in mind is Philly trains with a team of high-level wrestlers. Mm -hmm. So, it wasn't surprising to see team him... Team Alpha Male. Yeah, it wasn't surprising to see him stuff those takedowns. Yeah. I'm sure he does that in the training room every day. So, and, and he got a great takedown on Dennis Bermudez as well. Yeah, he did. So, yeah. Now, coming to the main fight, of course, uh, Ronaldo, Jakare, uh, Souza... Uh, versus uh, Derek Brunson, which was, of course, going to be, surprisingly, like we spoke about in the pre-chat, uh, Derek Brunson's stand-up game versus Ronaldo Jacare Souza's uh, takedown game. But, you know, now, now, now the interesting thing here is his Brunson also has a really good ground game. Uh, NCCA, uh, NCAA wrestling, Division Two, wrestler, Division Two yeah. wrestler, Jacare, of course, being, uh, you know, Jiu-Jitsu, <laughs> yeah. And uh, now, the fact that Jakare has a really good stand-up game as well, you know, and, and really good kicks, as in really good, as in effective. He, he, yeah, effective, yeah, effective. That's what I mean. But the, the reason I say effective is when it's effective, you're not only you. Sometimes when you're looking, you're trying to avoid that takedown. Your, you know, your your focus is when he's going to try to take me down. When he's going to take me down, and that's kind of what happened. Is he missed the head kick, which he tried to. Uh, you know, defend, but it still, it was so strong and powerful, it still went through and, sh and shook him up. So again, you know, one thing that we need to keep in mind when we say, you know, Zachary, Zachary has a good uh, striking game, would he survive a K1 match or a Muay Thai match? Definitely not. Yeah, But he's not. got an effective striking effective, game exactly. for MMA. Yeah. You know, that, that's the beauty of MMA. Enough his to, enough to, enough. Enough to yeah. set up his ground game. Set up his ground game and also also, if he connects, hmm. he is going to put you to sleep. And we've seen that. And that's happened twice with Brunson. Yeah. So, Which is, I mean, yeah. amazing that even the first time, it, it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, a stand-up stand -up. hit. You know, uh, a right hook. I think it was a right or a left. It was a right hook, I think. Right. Right. Believe, yeah, where, because... where Derek Brunson, which he usually used to do, is go for rather four. than a one-two combination, he went to, for, you know, a four combination, where on the fourth one... Yeah. That and and we almost that saw that happen again. Yeah, and, that, and that's something which, you know, and I would love that fight that Stipe did against Fabricio as well. Well, Fabricio just kept coming forward and Stipe went backwards and just got one in. So anyway, coming back to this fight now. So, because you have an effective uh, stand-up game, which, you know, leads to your uh, ground game, like Khabib. Khabib was amazing in his Edson uh, fight where Barboza just, you know, was overwhelmed because he wasn't ready for the stand-up onslaught, you know, and which softened him up for the takedown. So the same way you can say, was he almost not ready for that kick because he wasn't expecting it? So I don't think not ready would be the right thing, but, you know, like 
we've been discussing even in the pre-fight show. When you know that he's going to shoot, and yeah. which Zachary did, and he was stuffed. You know, at one point, Brunson stuffed him, and they both got back up. And I think Brunson, uh, you know, was just expecting him to shoot again. And that's when you lower your guard. You start thinking about getting into the whole, whether he's going to clinch, whether he's going to, you know, shoot. And that opens up opportunities. Again, you know, I think this is what I had mentioned the last time, that these opens up opportunities for, uh, you know, grapplers as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one thing that we've always seen with... Uh, Ronaldo is that he throws with bad intentions. Like every kick is thrown with bad intention. Yeah, and that showed. Yeah, I mean this one was uh, brutal. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, it was a classic shin to the head. I mean, yeah. though he blocked it, but yeah, the shin's a long bone. Bone, it's yeah, going to connect. Yeah, and just the sheer force of it is 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 too much. Now, if we, if we want to go uh, forward from here, of course, Ronaldo is number three. You know, in the uh, middleweight uh, division. And of course, Luke Rockhold and Joel Romero are fighting each other. Uh, my guess would be that he should... And Robert Whittaker, unfortunately, is uh, pretty sick right now. He's, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking after some things. Don't want to go into the medical, of course, terms of what he's going through without fully knowing everything. But he is, you know, and he needs to recover before he comes back, which is why Luke Rockhold and Joel Romero are fighting for the interim title. Personally, do you think a win over Derek Brunson is enough for him to get a shot at the winner of that fight? I think the way he won, definitely. And also the fact that he has been at the top of his game for a long time. Of course, of course except for his loss against uh, uh, Robert Whittaker. And before that, he lost to, to Romero. Uh, Romero. But I think that fight was, again, I can't remember, was overturned because UL tested for something. Again, I think this we brought this up in the few SC pre-chat. But anyway, so but he is, I think, one of the best fighters in the top five to not have gotten a title chance yet. So I think he was always lined up for it, but unfortunately he never, you know. But those this, fights were the fights he lost. That this would be, I think, now the the time to give him a shot at the winner of Rockhold versus Romero. I think it's the most easy decision to make. I I I don't. I mean, I can't recollect any other name in middleweight yeah. who should fight the winner of that fight. Or a Jakari Souza versus Kelvin Gastelum. Because Kelvin is still, uh, 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 you can say, injury-free, so is he. He's come out of this fight without any damage. Kelvin wants a shot at the title, and those two are already fighting. Why not set these guys up as the number one contender for the winner of that fight? So, I'd be more interested to see a rematch between either Luke Rockhold and... Zachary or Romero Zachary. For me, I think that's the fight that I'd be more interested in right now. Yeah. But then again, never know. Yeah. Well, that is what I think. You know, that could be an interesting uh, fight given that Gastelum did beat uh, Bisping and has, you know, been performing pretty well. He does deserve at least uh, the, the fight, both of them, to put them in, you know, contention or as the number one contender. And that's what I think. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, somebody out there is listening. And uh, I think that's it for today. But it was really good doing business with you. <laughs> though we <laughs> both of us didn't make anything out of it. But it was fun. It made things uh, interesting. And so that's it for us today. There are... Okay, let's... Uh, 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 just one last question from Rupender Sharma before we go. Is it better to block a high kick with hand close to head and feel the impact of the kick on the head or hand little far away from head and take the risk of broken hand? Just get out of the way. Just get out of the way. <laughs> if you can, get out of the way. I okay. Mean, a head kick's a head kick. And yeah. It's going to do damage. Yeah. I mean, there are multiple, like, the Dutch have their own technique of doing it. The Thais have their own technique of doing it. Which is more effective? I think it depends on who's kicking. Yeah. You know, if Krokop's kicking you in the head, yeah. I don't think blocking by putting your hand up is the best option. <laughs> yeah, you gotta... Uh, yeah, just get out yeah, of the get, way. Get out of the way get rather than... Way, yeah. A lot of, I think, fighters think, you know, putting the hand up is... Because a lot of times it is effective. But when, when you kick, like you said, with bad intentions, it's not. Yeah. You know? So we, you know, the thighs are known for uh, even if you put your hand up, the thighs are known to beat up your hand so much that they probably land up breaking your uh, forearm bones. Hmm. I mean, that's their goal. So, I, uh, once again, I guess it's about you know what your game plan is: is blocking a head kick and then countering it, 
your game plan then maybe that's what you want to do yeah we got some more questions coming in so we won't leave you just <laughs> now uh, taman also asks you know now uh, 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 featherweight fighters uh, josh emmet andre fili chad mendes coming back uh, how do you think they're going to uh, deal with this tam has many featherweight fighters uh, josh emmet uh, andre fili chad mendes coming back how do you think they're going to deal with this so <clears throat> i think uh, yeah let's let's see when chad mendes comes back yeah. and wins a fight and how the drug tests go yeah. and we'll take it from i i still think chad mendes is one of the top five for the weights and i think it's really interesting because uh more or less the featherweight division's been dead if you look at it since the time uh you had conor mcgregor going over winning the lightweight belt it's it's just been i think uh, holloway edgar fight is going to be an interesting way to yeah. revive it yeah. and having people like Chad Mendes back yeah. will make it much more interesting yeah okay and also this uh, Taman's asking us about our opinion on the uh, he's coming back this June he's saying well good so we'll see what he does in yeah. uh, June then uh, about the Stipe versus DC fight of course it's been uh, uh, announced and we did uh, we were there live at UFC 220 and at the post fight uh, you know press conference where DC when this fight was brought up with him because uh, Dana mentioned it in his post fight comments that that's the fight he wants to see Stipe versus DC because there were not many other fights to give Stipe and DC Daniel Cormier of course was 13 and 0 you know when he was uh, a heavyweight he's never been yeah. defeated as a, at, as a heavyweight and he was strike force heavyweight champion as well and he is if you look at it apart from the height disadvantage you know because he has to cut down to light heavyweight a lot but uh, this would be a very interesting fight because it's not as if you know he's going out of his comfort zone he's fought at heavyweight you know he knows uh, what it is to fight at heavyweight and he has and Dana did very openly say listen okay you don't want to fight your teammate if you let's say you win and you know and Kane comes back you can always give up the belt if you don't want to fight your which is fair enough but it does set up a really interesting super fight which allows DC to be uh, uh, the only other fighter apart from Conor to hold two belts simultaneously in the UFC run. Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting fight. I mean, this is one fight I really wouldn't know where to put my money because yeah. I see this fight going either way. You're looking at two really high-level wrestlers. Yeah. And uh, you know, DC's striking has been improving all the while. Yeah. And uh, Stipe is known like I mean, you should know Stipe for his striking. Yeah. So it's it's a very interesting fight though. Yeah. And uh yeah, it's it's a great super fight. Yeah. And Anshul Anurag saying saying uh, Miocic versus Cormier are desperate attempt to bring Miocic down. I don't think so. It's it's not an attempt to bring him down. I think they are putting the the best choice possible. And how you can never say it's 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 putting him down because then you are assuming that Daniel Cormier would beat him, beat him. or that he's too good and and Stipe I think the best thing about Stipe and Daniel Cormier is that you know see Daniel does give it back sometimes but if you look at both of them they are both gentleman fighters you know they let their fights do the talking you know if you look at Stipe the way he was uh, in the whole lead up to Francis he didn't say anything and the the best thing about this is you have two guys who are going to let their fighting do the talking you know and and i i cannot see any acrimony between both of them so i think also what we need to keep in mind is you're looking at uh, probably two of the best fighters in the world right now and yeah. they are looking at challenge as well yeah of you course know, they're they looking they at challenge, challenge yeah. i think in I, in fact i think rather than trying to put it down it's a compliment for yeah. them i think I mean, it's a great compliment who, why would he not want to fight yeah, who why, else for why would he not want to fight him you know I mean, it's it's a great fight for both of them and you have to remember as as, as the champions If you are a champion you get a percentage of the PPV. So both of them, you know, have something uh, to say. Because I think more than anything it's a great fight for the fans. It's a great fight for the you fans. You all win. I mean, you know, it, irrespective who wins or loses that And fight. apart from the Kane Velasquez factor, it it had it made every sense. And you know, and like Dana said, you know, if he wants to give it up, if you don't want to fight Kane after that, give it up, you know. Yeah. So I, I mean, it could be interesting to see how that plays out because yeah. Uh, again Kane and DC are again competitors yeah you know and one of the countdowns yeah uh, Javier Mendes pointed out one very good thing he said there's been a discussion all the while saying who's better DC or Kane yeah and he's the prob- he's probably the only guy who gets to watch that daily and decide who's better yeah maybe just maybe we'll get to see that fight yeah you never know 
So the last question now, <laughs> you know, uh, is uh, Adil Lalani's. Uh, 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 okay, you guys got <laughs> or keep asking questions, so we gotta stay around for a little while. Adil Lalani is asking Rockhold versus Romero, who you guys got. We did touch upon it right now for a little while. Personally, I, I uh, uh, would go with Rockhold. You know, uh, for his stand-up capabilities. He, he is, he's a black belt also in jiu-jitsu or is a purple belt? I, I don't think he's... A, I think he's a black belt, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Because, again, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that opinion. I think Rockhold, simply because uh, what most people don't realize is Rockhold started off as a grappler. Yeah. And then went on to improve his striking to a point where today he's known for his striking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so... Yeah. Also, uh, what I want to say is there is something to be said about making a, 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 a you know, I, I, I wouldn't go a lot to call it a comeback, but I think the, the Rockhold's loss to Michael Bisping really rankles with me. I think he saw it as a very big technical, well, maybe not technical, but mistake on his part to probably underestimate Michael Bisping and take it a little too easy where... He felt because he wasn't as focused, just because of that, he lost to Michael Bisman. And you can see sometimes that pain of having lost to Michael Bisman and wanting to come back. I think that desire is very strong in uh, Rockhold to become the champion, more so because of anything of losing to Michael Bisman and correcting a wrong, which he considers a wrong over there. So I think, you know, we've seen guys like GSP do that when he lost to Matt Serra. Yeah. He came back and how, you know, to a point where he yeah. got obsessed with fighting. I mean, yeah. It's it's really interesting to see how Rockhold's going to respond to that loss. Yeah. And he, he trains... Because if you look at his so. body language during the Michael Bisping fight, it was a little like, because I'm here, I, all I had to do was show up to win. There was a little bit of that... You know, because you, if you see some of his, if you, you see that fight again, you see some of his, you, 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 you know, uh, expressions. Uh, you know, it was like, okay. You know, it was almost like, so okay, I'm you got to I'm not sure one. if Rockhold, you know, or, or Rockhold's camp itself would have, uh, or would have taken Michael Bisping easily. But I think, yeah, like you said, maybe, you know, most people thought that Rockhold just needs to show up. And he's going to beat Bisping and I, I, I personally feel that's what I gathered from him. His attitude in that fight. And that's why I think it rankles with him a lot. That he wants to make that comeback because of that. Okay. Now, anyway, coming to our last question now, guys. <laughs> so, oh, well, uh, what's your opinion on uh, how much uh, from... This is from Anshul Anurag Singh. How much uh, of a UFC career will the CM Punk have? Now, we did see in his first fight... Of course, him losing in the very first round to uh, Mickey Gall. Uh, so, now, overall, of course, a Brock Lesnar has the skills, of course, to be an MMA. But as we know, in WWE or other pro wrestling fights, a lot of it is made up. You know, uh, uh, you know the combinations, this and that. Though they are very talented fighters. Do you think, because they are used to... now? This is one of the good things about CM Punk, though, though, is... I forgot who was telling me this recently. Is the reason CM Punk has such a big fan following is because he's a, he's a real guy in an un, unreal world. So, again, uh, to be really honest, I... One thing, you know, leading up to CM Punk's fight, I was, I was watching all the documentaries that were made on him. And one thing which was very evident was... Was he has heart. He has heart. Yeah. You know, he came from... a basically a choreographed fight into a real fight and look none of us really gave him a chance let's be really honest there was nobody out there who thought that he's going to beat Mickey Gall well a lot of his fans did because he's got a lot of fans but then you haven't seen Mickey Gall fight because really I'm, I'm saying that on the basis of uh, uh, the comments which come when we speak about so, him so I mean look at, look at it from this perspective anybody who's seen Mickey Gall fight or has you know done their work or homework on Mickey Gall knew that he's going to take the fight to the ground and Win it, but that doesn't take away the fact that CM Punk has a lot of heart. I would love to see him fight again. Why not? Why yeah, not? and I think he does deserve yeah. a, 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 Why not? A, a second chance. Dana White <laughs> is giving him a second chance. He deserves he a did, second chance. He did shake up the entire MMA community at that point. Yeah. yeah, I mean, give credit to the man. He he 
took the took up the challenge yeah. stepped up to the plate yeah and i would like to see fight again it, Why not? it takes balls to yeah, you know enter yeah. that octagon yeah. you know when you know things aren't scripted so, you know and especially when you have the pressure of millions of people wanting you to fail yeah and i think more than that the first time because the first time always you know you can say okay you, you, you know because of the way wwe is maybe he he you know there was a certain thing he he didn't realize of how real fighting is now having lost the first time and still wanting to come in back i think that really requires yeah, true I mean, guts people, people i i thought people were very brutal at that point commenting that oh he's had it easy and stuff it's it's not our place to comment we don't know what life he's led yeah saying that he's had it easy i think is a little too much i i really love the fact that he wants to come back and fight and i would love to see him fight again yeah. 100% Well, okay. So <laughs> we will see him fight. And on that note, that was our UFC post uh, uh, Charlotte fight uh, chat and uh, we spoke about a lot of other things as well. And thank you uh, Jitender Khare again thank for you. coming by. The best thing of course is uh, Jitender's gym is like 2 minutes away. <laughs> so it's very convenient for both him and us to have this chat which is uh, great. And uh, until next time, this is Praveen Devas on the MMA India show. Thank you, Jitendra Khare, for coming by one again, once again, and thank you all for tuning in. Thank you. Goodbye. Until next time. So, Sorry, yeah, you wanted to give a shout out. So, before we go, just a shout out to a friend and a role model, JJ Ambrose, Superman. Uh, we know you lost the fight via decision. It was a tough fight. Team Relentless will always be Team Superman, JJ Ambrose. You will always be our hero. Thank you. great on that note thank you and goodbye